Sup, baby girl? Yes, the name of this mission is Cloak and Dagger. It is a Nod mission. And in this mission, GDI has stolen our property. And we're not going to stand for that. We're going to take it back. One of the things that I like about this game, and this mission in particular, is that if you analyze the situation correctly, you should win. But if you make the slightest error, you're probably going to lose and have to restart. As you can see, we start off this mission with only one stealth tank. And you need to be very, very precise with your movements because there are so many ways that you can instantly lose this mission. If you get too close to the guard towers, they will shoot you even though you are cloaked. And if you accidentally target the concrete wall while you're moving through this area, you will get shot at and that has happened to me before. Now here at this part, the stealth tank needs to be on that exact square between the two advanced power plants when you target the guard tower. And this part has the only bit of luck that matters in this mission because you want to hope that no minigunner comes out of this guard tower when you destroy it. Once the guard tower is destroyed, we're going to target the fence around that mobile construction vehicle that GDI stole from us. We can't deploy the vehicle into a construction yard until the fence is entirely destroyed. Here the game is trying to bait you into a huge trap. You do not want to deploy the vehicle right away. You need to move the vehicle slightly upward first. Because the only possible thing that you can do next is build a power plant. And you have to build it on the exact spot that I'm building it. Now that opens up the ability to build a hand of Nod. But we have no space for it except where I just built that power plant. So we have to sell the power plant. Okay, so how do we get out of this situation? This base has six advanced guard towers, and they will instantly kill any infantry that gets within about a five square radius. Ah, but those advanced guard towers will be worthless if they don't have any power to operate. And look around us, there are four advanced power plants. If we could take out all four of these advanced power plants, it would disable all of the advanced guard towers. And that is why we are building engineers. If you're wondering where the 6th advanced guard tower is, you just found out. Our engineers just barely slipped through there, and we are just going to leave them where they are right now. In case you don't know, the function of engineers is to capture enemy buildings. That's why we need to train 4 engineers for this part. You might be thinking it's a better use of credits to build minigunners and go destroy those advanced power plants. But I can tell you that does not work and all of them would die. Alright, go, go, go. This is a highly coordinated attack. We're going to send one engineer to capture the nearest advanced power plant. That's going to draw the attention of the advanced guard tower. That gives us an opportunity to slip one engineer in to capture that other one on the south side. And our other two engineers can make a break for the two on the north side. Those two engineers cannot slip through there unless that advanced guard tower is targeting your advanced power plant. Alright, let's calm down. Everything went according to plan. The advanced guard towers are offline. So we'll go ahead and take out this one in the middle that was making our life difficult. And you can see that their tanks still are not reacting to anything that we're doing. This whole mission in which we're building our own base inside of their base is one giant exploit of the computer AI. Their units are generally not going to react to anything unless you directly provoke them somehow. Like right here, we're going to send this engineer to capture their construction yard, and that's going to wake up the tank that's lying right next to it. And now you can see why I built that turret earlier. Their tank is going to chase my infantry, and I'm just going to let them run around while the turret shoots the tank. Next we're going to shift our focus to those two guard towers on the east side of the base and we're going to get a refinery built. Once we take these two guard towers out, our harvester will be able to harvest Tiberium without being harassed. I probably could have kept both of those advanced power plants on the north side, but I decided to sell one and I'm going to build a regular power plant instead. 
It's in preparation for later. Alright, when my stealth tank attacked their guard tower, it provoked their weak little hummer. So I'm gonna send my minigunners over to destroy it. While I send our stealth tank to go back to work on these guard towers, I'll get back to what I was talking about earlier about provocation. You might have noticed that we've never actually directly attacked their base so far. An engineer capture does not count as an attack and guard towers aren't really considered part of their base. Their base consists of the actual structures like the silos and the weapons factory. If you order a unit to fire a single shot at an actual base structure, you are going to get a major reaction. On the way in, our stealth passed by those two mammoth tanks, and they will come after you. And there are some other tanks out on the battlefield that we haven't seen yet. Basically, I'm saying that if you provoke them before you're ready, they're going to come in and wipe out everything. And we are not ready yet. And another reason that you don't want to attack those structures is that they are using up power. You can see there's one more advanced power plant that we haven't captured yet. But if you recall earlier in the video, the stealth tank passed by a small complex and there is another advanced power plant over there. So those advanced guard towers can come back online. Okay, I built the communication center for two reasons. One of those reasons is not to get the map. I don't care about the map. One reason is that it is a prerequisite for building the obelisk. And the second reason is that when you build something, it has to be connected to one of your other buildings. So this communication center is going to be a connecting building. Obviously, what we're going to connect it to is the obelisk. And I think building the obelisk is the turning point in the mission. Once you've got it up, You've pretty much got the mission in hand. Okay, the obelisk is going up. Oh, this part is so much fun. Yes, I just targeted their guard tower with the obelisk. We are going to burn it to a crisp. Unfortunately, in this position, the obelisk can zap only the two guard towers on the right side. The two on the left will elude us for now. Alright, I just said that getting the obelisk is the turning point in this mission, and I'm about to show off why that is the case. And all that talk about provocation earlier was foreshadowing for this moment. I had my newly trained rocket soldier attack part of their base, the Advanced Communication Center, and that caught the attention of the mammoth tanks, so here they come. In a fair fight, these mammoth tanks are pretty tough to take down. But when you've got an obelisk, it's not a fair fight. With the mammoth tanks out of the way, the next thing that we're going to do is take care of those last two guard towers. Since they're out of the obelisk's range, we're going to send the stealth tank to deal with them. The reason that we want to take out these guard towers now is that we're going to want to send infantry over to that small complex that we saw at the very beginning. And those guard towers will kill our infantry. While I've got a minute, I want to talk about sandbagging. In case you're not familiar with this game, the computer AI does not understand how to deal with sandbags. It doesn't realize that it can destroy them. So if you build a wall of sandbags across a passageway, the computer will not be able to get through that passage. And you can take this exploit to the extreme and block them inside of their own base. I think that on this mission, most people use sandbags to win. And they probably believe that sandbags are necessary to win. But I like to play this game without sandbags. As a 12-year-old kid, I used sandbags because my young developing mind was incapable of advanced strategic thinking but I'm a man now so I like challenging my mind with difficult puzzles that require creative solutions all right now I'm gonna send the stealth over to deal with the two guard towers at the small complex it's not really possible to lose this mission at this point but you can still screw it up because that advanced guard tower at the complex can come back online and I'm trying to do this mission without 
tanks, except for our original stealth tank. Unit ready. I just erected the dreaded double obelisk, and we are going to have a lot of fun with that later. It's also there because the game is going to pull its typical dick move on you at some point coming up soon. But right now I've got more important things to do, like drive my stealth tank right next to a guard tower and get shot. Now there's an interesting structure within this complex. Building. That building with the three geodesic domes is called a tech center. And a tech center has no battlefield purpose. It also is not a buildable structure. It exists only for storyline purposes. The most interesting example is Nod Mission 3, in which GDI uses the tech center as a prison, and the objective of the mission is for Nod to capture the prison in order to free the prisoners. If you destroy the tech center prison, the mission is a failure. Alright, anyway, we've got two engineers on the way to capture their advanced power plant and the tech center, even though capturing the tech center is not required here. An interesting note is that you cannot sell the tech center once you've captured it, presumably because the game has no price value assigned to tech centers. And in this mission you also cannot capture their advanced communications center, but that's just because the game wants to be cheap and use its ion cannon on you. Oh, this part is classic. They start producing infantry from their barracks and tanks from their weapons factory. And as soon as they come out, they get lit up by the obelisk. Building. These other tanks that you see charging our base didn't come out of nowhere. They were scattered across the map. But there's still no real threat to us. We're just cleaning up, making preparations for the final phase of the mission. Right now, I sent a few rocket soldiers to take care of those advanced guard towers on the east side of the base. While their tanks continue to stream in, you can see that two helicopters magically appeared out of nowhere. That's the result of capturing the tech center. Unfortunately, we have no helipads to reload their ammo, so once they run out, they are going to be completely useless. What's happening in our base? An engineer raid! Oh my god! We were totally prepared for it, though. It's just another cheap move the game likes to pull out of nowhere on you. But our obelisk took care of the APC, and the engineers turned out to be retarded. And you just saw that Chinook fly over our base. That's another cheap move that they're going to try to pull on us. They want you to think that you're safe after fighting off this first attack. But that Chinook is full of five more engineers. And right on schedule, while we're talking about cheap moves, the game just hit our obelisk with the ion cannon. And you know how much I hate losing a building, but there's nothing we can do about that. Except, you know, maybe destroy that advanced communications center that's been sitting right next to our base this whole time. That's what enables the ion cannon. But as I said earlier, your engineer cannot capture the advanced communication center in this mission because the game wants to pull that cheap move that it just did. But whatever, hopefully we'll get our obelisk rebuilt before those engineers get here. And I'll send my rocket soldiers to destroy that advanced guard tower in the southwest. And oh my god, engineers! And they're stupid. They're trying to capture our northernmost buildings. All right, and now for the grand finale, my favorite part of the mission. All of the remaining structures are within range of our obelisks. So all these imperial GDI state buildings funded by taxpayer money are going to get burned to the ground with our terrorist lasers. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Now I thought this laser light show was going to be the end of the mission, but I was wrong. Because they still have a few infantry scattered around the map, but I'm not going to waste your time while I hunt them all down, so I am just going to skip ahead to the last one, and that will be the end of the mission. I'm the only one left. Oh my god, what was that? And now for the score screen, which is entirely meaningless. 
The only part that I slightly care about is the building's lost number. I don't like having that one building lost. If you do the mission well, you should have zero. Whatever. I'm gonna bounce. Catch you cats later.